Ovin sastoji slavljen, mesim Rom kotro Kosovo, peslum andi Kalifornija biš beš, hem mi profesija mesim hemičari, mukrum o Kosovo ano oftašel osamdeset osme, oftovar da se oftoto, hem me izvin napet me ge Palosakala Beša Ulum Nasal do Bakrona Čeram Nisarte Kerami Mičib. Kana živi Sardem Anlo Kosovo, Sarsova Keža Maro Prav Džanape Amen Kotoro Tiknipe, a kava prvo hovi Amen Dikape, Sar ta pavarde Amare Kera, I ako ovdje živim žani Moravska, ani uprni Mahala, a men živi najeni Dalmatinska, si ne amen mu je kod ova rivaliteti, ando sport, ando kelipe, ando dživdipe, ama si ne amen isto baro, ama ljepe. I would like now to switch a little bit on the English, because I would like to talk about a real statistics about the whole book that we published in 2002. And I, again, I apologize for my uh, Romanesque speaking people, but I hope uh, uh, there would, I'm pretty sure there would be appropriate translation for our Roma brothers and sisters. So, as I said, uh, I come originally from Kosovo, and uh, I am really delighted to be invited by Romani Congress to be here. Also, it's Tavis uh, Bakhtalimpen, very good moderating. Also, another information, I know Kenan Emini when he was just like this. And... <laughs> I know this guy on the very far, far left. Oh my God, I cannot get rid of him. Barry Fisher. <laughs> uh, we played a lot of Roma music together and performed. He also was one of the many great Americans that uh, at the end of the year write a check and make a donation for Voice of Roma. Uh, and. It's really nice to be here with him again. And now I want to ask just a general question. How many people are here from Organization for Security and Cooperation of Europe? How many, one. How many people are here from Open Society Institute? So, uh, you know, besides being a chemist, I am a dance instructor too. And I play rhythm and I sing. And I teach music a long way with uh, Barry Fisher many times in California. And when I talk with my Roma activist about the music, you know what comes the first thing to them? Dom Zaveshanje, Gypsy Times, or Goran Bregovic. When I started my festival in California, we did it for 22 years. We called it straightforward Herdelezi. And that was for American really very hard word to pronounce, right? <coughs> and um, we opened the organization Voice of Roma. And what is so sad, and really concerning about my Romani activism. I consider myself as an activist, but I really love to dance with my tradition, with my roots, with my ancestors. But some Roma activists, they started to dance with the devil, with the Open Society Institute. There is nothing open there actually. Organization for Security and Cooperation of Europe. 
There is nothing there, really. It's a devil's dance. There is no tradition. I'm sorry, if I may, I would like to focus a bit our discussion okay. today uh, on the history of the Roma the from history. Kosovo. Because we are talking about the history because this open society and this organization for security and cooperation and this United Nations and these K4 forces, almost 50,000, they made this ethnic cleansing. This is what we are talking, sister, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm going to jump on this side, and I would really appreciate if you bring out the first graph, please. We are talking about exactly the same thing, sister. Don't worry. I'm not getting out of the subject. When I see that, it's really scary for our Roma activism. This is what happened. Can I see the first chart, please? Okay. We are talking here about the pre-war population of Roma in Kosovo. This book was conducted two years of field research by Mr. Paul Polanski. Unfortunately, he is not anymore with us today. And uh, as you can see, the prior to the Kosovo conflict, we are talking 1999. Um, as Bill Clinton calls it, humanitarian bombing. What's the language? Humanitarian bombing. Some of you, maybe you don't speak English, but I never understood this word, humanitarian. How human it could be. You threw the bomb with the cluster bombs at my people, at my home, at my tradition, at my roots, at my ancestors, and you call it humanitarian bombing? Give me a break. So, as you can see, during the war, 1999, how much is of the Roma population? Yeah? And so, afterwards, when the K4 forces came, and the UN, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation, and the Red Cross, and the Doctors Without the Borders, they made Kosovo the garage sale. Capitalism. They took literally everything that existed in Kosovo. Yeah? Yes. Who wanted this? The corporation that are sponsoring the wars. Raytheon. Lucky and Martin, they want that, brother. Because production of weapons is the business for America and NATO's countries. Nothing to do with uh, peace. If you negotiate today with, about a peace, to talk about a peace, you are not going to get a peace because the arm industry have to earn. J JP Morgan has to earn. Black Rocks has to earn. This is what we are talking about, brother. Yes. I would love to see my brothers and sisters there, happy at our home. I lived with Albanians. I played football at a very high level with Albanians. I played basketball also with the Serbs and with Gorani and with Turks. And now everything is gone because of the humanitarian bombing. Kosovo was very rich with the minerals. And why do you think now, if we go to the next chart, please? As you can see, Mitrovica was highest of the town and the city that was ethnically cleansed. Why? Because there are the minerals, right? And guess who was wanted those minerals? Ex-NATO commander, Wesley Clark. Yes. And guess who also wanted to buy the post office there? Mrs. Madeleine Albright. Yeah, the, 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 the main chief negotiator of Rambouillet peace processes, which was completely uh, a farce actually. So, as you can see, there is one orange tip there on the two cities, towns, Prizren, 
which by the way, prison has very good chabapchichi, and uh, uh, still uh, the downtown in prison is still intact. It has a really old Ottoman uh, feeling. It's really nice. And uh, Podujevo, which is uh, mostly populated with uh, Ashkalie. Non, not so many Roma, but Ashkalie. Just to give one little difference, the, 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 the difference in between Roma and Ashkalie is literally nothing. They are both Roma. But Ashkalie speak their first language, Albanian. And we Roma that speak Romani are more kind of associated with uh, our ex-Yugoslavian language. We, we recognized as a Serbo-Croatian as our first language. And my mother tongue is Romanese. And so in order for Ashkali to be associated and integrated more into Kosovo-Albanian society, they have to speak their first language, Albanian. Okay? And Egyptian, meh. Uh, this term is very interesting to me because uh, I did not hear about this term till the first census that were done after when Kosovo was the province. In 1981, suddenly there were Egyptians, but actually Egyptians are also Roma. They just think that their ancestors through the Persian Gulf went through Egypt and arrived in Kosovo, and that's why they call themselves Egyptian. Anyway, so I would like to go to the next chart. Ah, uh, uh, excuse me, go, can you go back a little bit? And I, what I failed to mention here in Prizren, there is also some reconstruction of the Roma um, <laughs> houses. Even though Prizren was uh, interesting because they had one of the political representative, Haji Zulfa, and he was a little bit in the politics, right? But also Roma didn't feel so good about him. However, in Podjevo, definitely there is a lot of uh, uh, instances where the Ashkali joined the UCK, which is Ustria uh, Slirimtare Pre Kosovas, and uh, they call themselves Kosovo Liberation Army. Actually, what is UCK? Uh, it's literally straightforward Nazi, just like Azov Battalion in Ukraine right now. That is who was UCK. And West is helping Ucheka, and now West is helping again Azov Battalion. Yeah? And we have to fight for the freedom and democracy. And then tomorrow we are going to buy McDonald's, and we are going to drink Coca-Cola, and wear Nike. And that is freedom and democracy, right? So, as you can see, Podujevo, uh, the Ashkali joined the Kosovo Liberation Army. And so in order for the Albanian to show how they're uh, treating their minority, Roma, this is what we, we built for them, right? But the rest of the country was literally burning. In front of the 45,000 K4 forces, in front of the 5,000 UN soldiers, in front of the uh, OSCE, Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and guess what? When you have a refugee crisis, guess who earn most of the time? Red Cross, United Nations, <laughs> Doctors Without the Borders. They really don't care about the Roma homes. What are you talking, Mr. Yashari? There is no business with Roma. You have to be a terrorist. Can we go to the next graph, please? It's hard to live in the West. I, I'm losing it, I'm telling you. I'm sick and tired. I miss my tradition, sister. I miss to dance with Pure. With the Purens are the Kela Horo. Yeah. So, as you can see, numbers of Romani occupied houses in the six municipalities. Okay? On the blue, uh, there is a prior to the war, on the yellow, 
It's after to the humanitarian bombing, yeah? So after 78 days of uh, bombing, uh, thanks to our uh, 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 defense minister, Mr. Joska Fischer, who is really very much concerned about the environment, right? And so he gave so much bombs with the depleted uranium. After three days, massive ethnic cleansing started throughout Kosovo. And when I started to speak this in America, they called me Milosevic supporter. You are spreading Milosevic's propaganda. Huh? Wait a minute, Milosevic also hurt my people. How come I'm talking about Roma people? Who are those people? Roma, are they tomato? No, they are Romani people, they are known as gypsies. You know, you have to educate Americans because the Americans are the most propagandized people in the world. Now, if you talk against the uh, uh, Ukraine war, then you are spreading Putin's propaganda. It doesn't matter if a young Ukrainian died. Just like a young Ucheka soldier died in Kosovo without any proper training. They just grab them and put them, train them one week, and that is very good business for NATO's country. They go in Poland, they go now in Romania, they go in Kosovo, they go in Croatia. They train them and they bring them there to fight the dirty wars. And this is what's happened. This is really what happened. Why this was not news on CNN or NBC, NBC or BBC, why? Because it doesn't bring money. Can we go to the next chart? So here now we went also, we tried to do the statistic with these charts about the Egyptian, how many Egyptians uh, uh, lost in the period Kosovo Roma lost in the period between pre war 99 and summer 2001 by ethnic subgroups. Okay? When we put here asterisk lost, that means displaced or missing or killed. Now, as you can see, we divided them. In some instances, it didn't matter who you are, whether you are Ashkali or Egyptian or Roma, you would say, uh, face anyway ethnic cleansing. Okay? So, just to give you one uh, example, when we went to look for a missing person at United Nations for the missing people, they say, we are not in jurisdiction to, do, to, to, to give you any information if they are not uh, family members. Wait a minute, we are organization and the family members cannot come from Germany because they were ethnically cleansed. And here is the affidavit and notarized statement that we would like to see what's going on. They didn't want to give you any information. But guess what? Next week, young Roma, 18 years old, marrying 15 years a Romani girl, and then they charge him with the adultery. This is what United Nations does in Kosovo, people. And you know that in Roma culture we have young age uh, marriages, but in the West, you know, uh -huh, that's uh, underage. You have to face the... No, this how Roma survived for centuries, getting married earlier. So, and now, also we did with the houses occupied prior to the war and after math of the war. So as you can see, this is really what uh, is a sad story because we did not start this conflict in Kosovo. Roma did not start this provocation. We were just a victim, not just uh, between the Serbs and, and, uh, and the Albanians. Not really. It's actually about the big bosses that are coming, such as Uncle Sam, such as 
Annalina Barbok, who gives a lot of ammunition to Azov, which is openly Nazi paramilitaries. And now we want to solve this issue? God help us. We don't even think that maybe tomorrow we can see just one mushroom and we are disappearing. You want to pock the bear where it's not supposed to be pocked. So can we just do the peace negotiation and try to find a solution and, and make those people not to die anymore? Because there is plenty of everything for everyone. There is so much researchers uh, and the richness and the everything you have in life. But with the bombs, there is no solution. I thank you very much. <laughs>